I'm surprised these jitters are staying with us as long as they are. We aren't playing like we usually do this early in the game. That's Relisha Adams, a six-foot sophomore from Dermot, Arizona, in replacing Ann Thomas. Adams averages 10 points and almost nine rebounds a game. Guillory at the line, a 67% free throw shooter. Front rim, the first one. Guillory now with three points. Tech leads by three. All of Tennessee Tech's points have come from Angela Moorhead. I'm surprised we haven't used any fast break all night. Uh, they're just bringing it up playing half court. But this I'm sure. was good by Cecilia Ramsey. Well, you know, they tried a couple of times, but Tennessee State's so quick getting back on defense. I'm sure that's part of Coach Lawrence's strategy. Yeah. Good ball movement by the Lady Tigers. Shot wouldn't go. Guillory gets the rebound and puts it in. Guillory has five. She gets up over everybody. She's a big gal. You see Bill Whirl on the far side saying she's on her back. There's a foul underneath. It looks like they're going to call Relisha Adams for her first. Would be the third on the Lady Tigers of Tennessee State. You know, sometimes coaches are more fun to watch than the players at times. Yeah, Bill, I call him Mr. Tons because he's so soothing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a block shot by Guillory as Moorhead went up. Moorhead's getting into the game now, so uh, I think she'll pick up the tempo here. There's, There's another. another block. This one was by Adams. Shot wouldn't go by Ramsey. Ramsey may have may have been blocked again. They're tough inside. There's a great play by Moorhead there to take that out of bounds and bounce it back into their girls. Moorhead's shot won't go. And Melinda Clayton got the rebound, so the Eaglets are on the board on the offensive end. Mincy Rice's shot won't fall. There's another block, but a whistle. Oh. I'll take that whistle. That was a pretty good block, I thought. I'm amazed at how well Tennessee State, because blocking a shot is a skill that very few of the gals have, but at Tennessee State, they're coming from everywhere. They're right on the hand there, they say. And Melinda Clayton, Clayton is only shooting 48% from the free throw line this year. Very uncharacteristic. She, by the way, is the leading block, uh, shot blocker in Tennessee Tech history. He has the skill. But she's got to become a factor in this game here because with the height they've got under there, Melinda's got to make up her mind to go after those rebounds. Angelique Bell and Ann Thomas back in for the Lady Tigers. And as you say, they like to run. And as long as they keep them fresh like that, it's going to be tough against Tennessee Tech. Clayton's second shot goes, and that's her first point of the game. Melinda Clayton is averaging 13 points a game. Three points drive will not fall. Ann Thomas got the rebound, kicks it back out. Lady Tigers tried from up front, still won't go. Another rebound, this one won't go, and Sean Mundy gets the rebound. If they had four shots on the offensive board, we need to stop that. But I think uh, as long as we're in that zone, then they'll have to shoot it from outside, and they don't be, seem to be impressive yet with their outside shooting. Turnaround won't go for Moorhead. Rebound to Clayton. She puts it up, but there's a foul against Clayton. Underneath. That's her first and the third on the Eagle S. You see that again, Bill. Yeah, there's. Uh, it was definitely a foul on Melinda, but I think that's what we need to get a little more action out of her. She seems to be a little bit intimidated right now by the height in there. Traveling violation against Ann Thomas as she took a step going into the lane. I'm not sure Bill Warrell didn't call that. Uh, he got in the ref's ear. <laughs> you see the crowd over there. There are many more Tennessee Tech people here at this point than there are Tennessee State partisans. This is my first time in here, Steve. Is this normal crowd for them or? The two previous times I've been here, it's been about like this. Tennessee Tech uh, brings more people for the women's game. Missy Rice.
Nice drive for three. Missed it. Ramsey with a rebound. Tech again on the offensive boards. Ramsey walked trying to get the ball out of there. But the Eaglets are doing the job on the offensive boards right now. That they are, and uh, they're moving the ball much better now. So I think they're about to get over these jitters. Uh, 11 to 7 here. That's not uh, what you would expect at this time of the game, but great play by Angela. Angela Moorhead, that's her 21st steal of the season. She leads the Eaglets in that category. Good play by Ann Thomas to keep the pass from going into Melinda Clayton. If Clayton had got that one, there was nothing between her and the basket. Stan Thomas, a sophomore from... She's a sophomore from Portland, Arizona. They go nationwide with their recruiting. They got them from Michigan and Arizona. Or is it Arkansas? <laughs> I'm not sure. There's a block by Mitzi Rice. Came over top of Martha Newsom. Newsom is only 5'2". There's Moorhead underneath, couldn't get the shot to fall. Knocks the rebound up, and Clayton knocks it out to Rice. Moorhead is open this time, and puts it in. Angela Moorhead is in double figures with 11.29 to play in the first half. Angela Moorhead has 10 points, and Missy Rice out front kicks the ball. Right to us, Phil. <laughs> Go ahead and take a free throw, Steve. Here we go on this block by Rice here, and this is an excellent job. Uh, the official's right on top of it, and he couldn't call it. It had to be a block. Number 33, Sheila Jackson, a 5'10 freshman from Moscow, Tennessee, is in the game. Her bringing the ball in. TSU coach is using her bench to a good advantage right now. Right from the top of the key, still hits the front of the rim from Newsom and Sean Mundy coming down the floor with it. Angela Moorhead, she will shoot from anywhere on the floor. Angela looks like she's getting a little tired. Bill might want him to call him a timeout here. But playing this zone, it should be fine. Guillory off the glass, no good. Ball is tapped, goes out of bounds. Off of the Eagleettes. Coming back into the game for Tennessee State, number 11, Jody Woods. See Bill Whirl talking Bill, to the official. Working that official, but he got to hold the ball again, and that's what he likes. <laughs> again, the substitution's running rampant for Tennessee State. They're running them in and out. You talked about Angela Moorhead being a little tired. As Guillory goes up, they'll call Sean Mundy for reaching in. That'll be Sean's second foul of the game. Tennessee Tech, of course, has Renee Adams, whom they can put in there, averaging 7.8 points per game and four and a half rebounds with limited playing time. Well, we've got Arnetta Peterson over there and Renee and uh, well, Dana. Just name the whole bench. Right. Any of those girls would probably be starting on any other team. They pack it in on the inbounds play, but the shot wouldn't fall for Bell. Goes out of bounds off the Lady Tigers. Tennessee Tech has it as Awesome Eagle handles the ball boy duties. See you there. She is Miss Perfection. There's the three pointer. Bounces no good, but Clayton with a rebound blocked again. Lots of block shots. Alternating possession will go to Tennessee Tech. Melinda did a fine job on that board there, and then Moorhead, uh, she's working so well away from the ball right now. Here's a shot and a rebound by Melinda, but there's another block shot that uh, Tennessee State's doing super with right now. Melinda Clayton, by the way, averages nine and a half rebounds per game. She leads the Eaglets in that category. It's getting awful physical under there right now. Moorhead and 43 are going at it, and they caught 43 on their foul. That'll be the third foul on Tina Guillory, the 6'4 senior from Detroit, and I know they can't afford to lose her. She's a real weapon under that basket at 6'4". Ann Thomas will check back into the lineup as soon as, well, it looks like she's checking in now. And she is. There you see 
Stu and Philip Gibbons on the front row. <laughs> Philip is a supporter, all right. He does the PA system at the women's games in Cookville and many of the men's games. As Angela Moorhead at the line misses the first one. And Stu works for WCTE. They are fine supporters of Eagle at basketball. Angela Moorhead, a 76.5% free throw shooter, and misses both of them. Balls tapped out of bounds by Cecilia Ramsey. Cecilia did a good job getting position that time, but just couldn't handle the ball. Eaglets will come out with a full court press again. Tennessee State, up to this point, has had no real problems handling the press. I saw a little bit of the tape of the Vanderbilt game, and they uh, gave Vanderbilt a trouble at first with their press, but and there's a good play by Angela. Angela doing a little intimidation in the corner there, and the gal took her eye off and looked at Angela. Sheila Jackson couldn't handle the pass and went out of bounds. Sean Mundy with it. Looking inside against Tennessee State. Ramsey takes the three, no good. And Ann Thomas with the rebound. It looked like Bill, I'm not sure. And as the pass goes out of bounds, Tech will get it back. Looks like they're boxing, boxing one against Mix, Mitzi Rice. They have one person matching up with Mitzi and uh, four people in uh, zone defense. That's what they ran the last time down there, but uh, uh, here they are again in this. Uh, sort of a diamond yeah, in that's one, a, I guess you would say. That was a boxing one, I believe, then. And then uh, if they let them get in that close, they're packing that under so deep that our girls are going to... Uh, get the shots that they want. Nice fake. Shot wouldn't go for Bell. And there's the foul against Cynthia Hicks, her first. That's an excellent job there by Cecilia getting up on that board. That's 16 fouls against Tennessee State. Next time, Tennessee Tech will be in the bonus shooting the one and one. Well, I think that clock says nine, but I'm not real sure there's so many. 58, I believe. Yeah, that, that nine on the clock, there's a lot of lights out on the clock down on our end here. Sean Mundy drives inside. Good, Good pass. Good play. Angela Moorhead has 14. She averages 16 a game. And timeout called by Teresa Lawrence. Her high this season is 22. She's only eight away from that with 8.40 to play in the first half. I think she's been in double figures, something like 20 straight games, uh, I believe I read somewhere. Rob Shabert would tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I read it where she has been in double figures that long. Now here's a shot by, and this is excellent play by Sean here. She sets up this uh, pass, and then all Angela's got to do is lay it up there, so. Sean is one of the best we've ever had here at seeing the entire floor. Once she brings that ball down, uh, she does as good a job as anyone we've had at looking at the floor and getting the ball to the open person. I think Bill might tell them a little bit about this press, so uh, I, I would be surprised if we didn't see more of the press as we uh, progress here, because the one time he's had it on, the PSU uh, didn't handle it quite that well. But I was noticing that Coach Lawrence, that's what she's doing now, working on this press. So there's Coach Whirl with the, with the basketball. It's my ball. <laughs> he acted like he dropped it. Now, he didn't really drop it. He just dribbled it. Bill, I believe he practices this at home at night. Angela Moorhead, you were talking about her double-figure performances. Every game this season, she scored uh, in double figures. And two times, she scored 20 or more. 38 of her 41 games as a Golden Eagle at she scored in double figures 30 straight times. That's fantastic. That's almost unbelievable. Four consecutive double-double performances. That's right. Too. And she should get it tonight easily the way she's playing right now. First basketball is played in streaks. Mitzi Rice gets up and gets the rebound on the defensive board for the Golden Eagleettes, who lead by 10. Sean Mundy lost a handle on it. Good defense by the Lady Tigers. Another. Linda Clayton is open for the shot. Due to the pass from Sean. Sean's doing a super job with her assist, but like you say, she's got the record. This time, Tennessee State beats that press easily. Couldn't get the first shot to fall. Thomas's shot won't go. And they call a foul on Melinda Clayton as Jackson went back up with it. 
That'll be Melinda Clayton's second foul and the fifth team foul against Tennessee Tech. I'm not real sure what percent Tennessee State's shooting right now, but I'm sure their coach isn't happy with it. They're getting the shots, they just aren't falling for them. Relisha Adams checks back in for the Lady Tigers. Tennessee Tech has not made any changes at all, and they have not had one substitution thus far in the game. When they get to that free throw line, you can see them pulling on their pants and uh, getting that air, but they're getting pretty tired right now. Well, here comes Bill now working some of his uh, bench in there. Dana's coming in and Renee. Dana Scott, number 31. Renee Adams, number 55. Here you see Renee, 6'2 junior from Gallatin, Tennessee. Dana is a 5'8 sophomore from Oak Ridge. We don't lose anything when they come in there, though. It's not putting in subs. It's just putting in extra players. Got some movement in the lane, look like. So Jackson will have another shot at it. She's a 50% free throw shooter coming into this contest. She gets both of them. Peculiar well, shot for a free throw, but if you make them, it doesn't matter how. Yeah, I've seen, seen some strange ones over the years. Dana Scott for two. Dana is all business out on that floor. Once she gets in there, she is full 100% basketball. Good passing by the Lady Tigers. Shot won't go, and Dana Scott gets the rebound for the Eagleettes. Sean Mundy is forced out of bounds by Jody Woods. It's going to be Tennessee State ball. Good defense. Excellent Other. play by Jody there, and don't many people do that, or there's not many people that do that to uh, Sean Mundy. Back into the lineup, number 15, Cynthia Hicks, the 5'10 sophomore from Nashville, who started the game. I don't know how they keep up with playing time. Three-pointer by Jody, Jody Woods. Wood, the first three-pointer I believe they've made. Either team. No, I believe uh, no, I that believe is the first three-pointer three in the game. Again, Tennessee State in that diamond and one or box and one. They're guarding Mitzi Rice heavily. Moorhead gets the ball and fires it up, and she's fouled. She has such a presence about her. She could feel the contact and threw the ball up, knowing she wouldn't make the shot. That's absolutely true. She did that knowing the foul was coming. Uh, 33, Sheila Jackson. Jackson, I believe, is the culprit on the foul there. So Angela Moorhead shooting 76.5%. Missed her first two. Now makes this one. She has 15 in the game. Here she is getting this rebound, and uh, yeah, she's hit pretty well there by Sheila Jackson. Misha Thomas checks into the Tennessee State lineup, a 5'11 sophomore from Screven, Georgia. And Angela Moorhead is perfect from the line this time. 16 points. She's only three-tenths of a point away from her per-game average. Takes putting the press on again here and is causing Tennessee State a little trouble right now. Pass inside. Adams knocks it out of bounds. It'll be Tennessee State's ball. There's a traveling violation against Jody Woods. They're still getting that ball awful close under there, and uh, uh, we're just going to have to move them back out a little bit and quit packing in that zone so far under the basket. Sean bringing it down, and again, we're set up, and they're still staying in the same defense. So we need to hit a couple of these three-pointers and bring them out of that real quick. Sean Mundy takes the shot, misses front of the rim, puts it back up on the rebound, and in. Sean Mundy's first basket of the game. Not called on to score a lot when you pass as well as she does. Good pressure down there by Dana Scott, and Sean Mundy takes it away. It's Tennessee Excellent. State's ball on the alternating possession. Sean got those two early fouls, and since then she's played a well of a ball game here. Okay, here's the pass under the, and Sean just actually moves in and muscles herself in there to take that pass away. 5'6", senior from Clark Range, Sean Mundy. Golden Eagle lets in the 2-3 jump defense, as you saw the trap. But the Lady Tigers work it inside, and that's Misha Thomas. Turn around.
Rebound by Moorhead will not fall. Woods is underneath for the rebound. Lady Tigers have used all but three players on their bench, and this one is good by Relisha Adams. Her first basket of the game. As an excellent pass, they beat us back down the court, and the gal saw the one open girl. And, uh, and here again, another mistake by Tennessee Tech. Uh, we're getting a little over anxious. They just need to slow it down a little, and I believe that's what Bill's telling them over there. Cecilia Ramsey checks back into the lineup, replacing Sean Mundy for the Golden Eagleettes. Eagleettes lead by nine, and Lady Tigers have the ball. Woods from three-point range is good. She has two three-pointers in the game, and Tech leads by six. There's a foul by Woods. That's yeah. her first of the game. Even I could see that one. <laughs> she's a hustler, but if she hustles that much now, she's trying to do it by herself. And if you do that, then she's going to get into the foul trouble. Here comes Cecilia here, and yeah, she had, she might have gone ahead and thrown it up like Angela did, and maybe get her two shots. But uh, so Cecilia Ramsey goes to the line, shooting 67 percent. Golden Eagleettes having trouble finding the mark tonight. There's a foul as the ball went to the floor. I don't know if they'll call Moorhead or Adams. I believe it's Renee. I think Renee Adams got the foul there. And That's her first. Sixth on the Eagleette. So next time Eagleette's foul, the Lady Tigers will be in the bonus. a pass across and work it inside. Good ball movement by the Lady Tigers and Angela Moorhead gets the rebound. Dana Scott here, when she brings that ball down, she comes down with a purpose. Uh, we need this three. Yeah, give her two. Give her two. Must have been on the line. She toes the line. She uses it as a mark. There's a couple of times we've seen her do that. More than a couple, actually. Yolanda Bugs, who's in the game for her first action, misses the shot. And now Teresa Lawrence has used everybody but two players as Mitzi Rice gets the rebound for Tennessee Tech. It's kind of showing in the conditioning, too. Uh, we aren't getting up and down the floor like they are. Of course, Tennessee Tech is without the services tonight of Cindy Montooth with a sprained ankle as Ramsey takes the top of the key and misses the shot. Foul will be on Relisha Adams, though, her second. Uh, Cecilia, I haven't seen our girls uh, miss as bad as they're missing tonight in a long time here. There you see Cindy Montooth. Yeah, I saw her on crutches yesterday. I asked her how it was feeling, and she said it was feeling much better. So she's gotten rid of those tonight, so it must be coming along. She's a sophomore from Loudoun, Tennessee. Dana Scott at the line. And Dana has five points in the contest. Averaging 5.4 games, so she could get her average with this shot. 78%, almost 79% free throw shooter, and misses it. Renee Adams, though, with a rebound. It's blocked by Adams. That'll be her third. That's three. On, Adams. Three on their big girl, and that's going to hurt them. Uh, they also have three on Tina Guillory, who's not in the game at the moment. With her bench strength, uh, she's uh, run them in and out, but still, uh, she could get in trouble here real quick if she's got two of her best players with three on them. Here's Bill giving his instructions here. It wouldn't surprise me to see him uh, pack it in a little bit tighter even with them in foul sh trouble. Shiloh Carson, a 5'11 sophomore from Union Mills, Indiana, checks into the game for the Lady Tigers of Tennessee State. And Renee Adams couldn't get the shot to go. It's knocked out of bounds, but uh, it's a two-shot violation. So she'll get another try at it. Carson, that's everybody on the roster except for one, and I'm not sure if that one is even dressed out for the Lady Tigers. Looks like they've used everybody. Renee Adams shot bounds around, and Carson, just in the game, gets the rebound. Trying to move it inside is foul. I'm afraid that's on Moorhead. Uh, That'll that be her second. Second on Moorhead. So, Relisha Adams, a six-foot sophomore from Dermott, 
Is it Arkansas or Arizona, Bill? Yeah, I say that's Arizona. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I'm sure if it's not, someone will tell us about it. <laughs> but they're in the one and one here. Three and a half minutes or four minutes left to play. 351, I believe that clock says. Adams a 57% free throw shooter. It bounces no good. And Renee good. Adams for Tennessee Tech got the rebound. Good job by Renee. Tennessee Tech leading by nine. Mitzi Rice three-pointer, though, will take it back to 12. Nothing will bring him out of that zone quicker than that. That's Mitzi's first basket of the game. She averages 14 a game, has been averaging about 19 a game or past four or five contests, but they got the box in one. They're concentrating on her. Carson. Shot won't go, and a foul as Adams goes for the rebound. Uh, I think when you see this, uh, it's Renee Adams' second foul of the game. Right. Uh, Bill's pretty upset about this because the gal did jump back into Renee. You'll see it right here. I believe Renee's just standing here waiting for the ball, and the gal that gets the rebound jumps back into her. But I think the officials so far have done an awful good job. Uh, Dana Scott tries to save it out of bounds, but couldn't get a handle on it, so it's going to be Lady Tigers' ball. From the corner, three-pointer is in there by Cynthia Hicks, her first basket of the game. Had to get a little tougher on them down there. We're just leaving them wide open. Now. Dana just lost her, I believe. She didn't know where she was. Adams takes the baseline, and there's a foul underneath. Looks like they pointed toward Carson. That'll be Shiloh Carson's first foul of the game. Here you see Coach Teresa Lawrence in her first year as the Lady Tiger coach. They're 500, 5 and 5. Doing an impressive job. Uh, she's really into the ball game. What I like is she has the total respect of those players. When she says something, they're all listening. Cecilia again missed dependability here. Uh, she has make, four in the game. She makes them when you need them. 22-33. Eaglets lead back up to double digits again. Yolanda, or check that, Relisha Adams with the shot. Angela Moorhead drives in and puts it through the hoop. 18 points for Moorhead. You know, they're concentrating on Mitzi Rice because of the way she's been playing lately. But you can't do that against the Eagle Eats. They've had, I believe, four different people have led the team in scoring at different times this year. And that's what they did there. They seem to be leaving Angela alone and uh, concentrating on Mitzi. And another great steal by Angela here. Ball is on the floor. And Cecilia Ramsey picks it up for the Eagle Eats. Good hustle by both teams. Scott fakes the shot, now takes it. Dana Scott with a nice move, and she has seven points. Great job by both Cecilia and Dana. Just under two minutes to play in the first half, and Tech is leading by 15 points. Yep, and to have Tech leading by 15, and uh, Mitzi Rice, what you got? One field goal? Uh, Mitzi Rice has three points. So uh, it's one field goal, three points. Be a hit, 15 points, and her scoring three points. Uh, Shot is good. Great shot. Forced it up there, but uh, she goes up tough under that board. Hard worker. Dana Scott was open, didn't take the shot. But Cecilia Ramsey will, and she makes it. Ramsey now has six. Yeah, now it looks like Tennessee State's getting a little tired also. They're, they aren't moving with the agility they had a while ago. Carson shot off the glass, no good. Renee Adams got it for Tennessee Tech. It's certain in the Tennessee State and women's team we're normally used to seeing uh, there. Much more disciplined, and boy, they like to run up and down the floor, too, at the same time. Foul underneath. I think someone hit that ball. Uh,
Bills working the official again. I believe they call the third foul on Renee Adams. And now number 13, Leslie Williams checks in for Tennessee State, a four foot 11 inch freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. And she is the last one on the bench, Bill. They've used everybody. This coach is doing an impressive job here. She's a, into this ball game. Shiloh Carson at the line. Her first point of the game. She becomes the eighth Lady Tiger to score in this contest. Another free throw. Carson had a nice touch and the lead for the Eagles is 13. Under a minute to play in the first half. Here's first time, they, second time they put the press on us, I believe, and an excellent job under there getting it to the open person. Rice's um, shot wouldn't go, but Adams on the rebound is fouled. I, I believe she was fouled by the number 13, the smallest person on the floor there, Leslie Williams, at four foot 11. <laughs> and Renee is 6'2". You have to score in this game, too. Lady Tigers will send Ann Thomas back into the game. She hasn't seen as much playing time as, as you would expect. I think she's been their leading scorer in about half of their games, but tonight uh, they aren't using her that much. Renee Adams, yeah. second shot won't go. And none for four for Renee, but she'll come around. Three-point try will not go. Renee Adams trying for the rebound, and Relisha Adams got it away from her. And Thomas, the turnaround in the lane, no good. Mitzi Rice came down with it for the Eagle S. Turnaround, Renee Adams is in. Her first basket of the game, and time is going to run out now in the first half as they fire the shot hit the rim but it was thrown away after the buzzer rang so at halftime it's Tennessee Tech 41 and Tennessee State 26. Very impressive first. And as we start the second half Tennessee Tech leading Tennessee State's Lady Tigers 41-26 and that little skirmish there for the ball is pretty characteristic of the way these teams are going at it right now. They're Bill. going full bore and it's awful physical ball game out there. I, I think that uh, Tennessee State's their physical conditioning was paying off in the first part of the game but in by the time the whistle blew uh, we were on dead even turns with them and it's a lot of good athletic ability going on under those baskets there. It's a um, knockdown drag out but uh, so far, Tennessee Tech's held their own on both the offensive and the defensive boards, and I expect to see a little more running out of us this second half. We're enjoying a 15-point lead here as we start the second half. Tennessee Tech shot 48.6% in the first half to 29% for the Lady Tigers of Tennessee State. There's Angela Moorhead. She has 20 points tonight. Great pass. Uh, Sean Bundy has four assists in the first half, too. There's a steal by Cecilia Ramsey and a good save by Ramsey. They pass it ahead to Sean Mundy. She holds up and looks the floor over. They got Sean playing out on the wing here with uh, Cecilia Ramsey at the point. Yep, Bill's, uh, he's kind of turned up the tempo a notch or two, and there's another great pass under there and should have been two points. But a little excited for uh, Melinda. I believe he's got Sean on the wing so she can see inside better maybe to make those types of passes. Although she didn't make that last one. There's Ann Thomas on the turnaround, won't fall. And it's saved by Ramsey. Here comes Sean Mundy with the ball. He's going to keep her out there. Like you say, it might be for the uh, opening up the passing lanes there. And Gonna take the shot this time, and it's good. Sean Monday, her second basket of the night. Eaglets again in the full court press. Lady Tigers do the right thing to beat the press, but the shot will not go. Handled it very well, but uh, got a little anxious there. Tennessee Tech out rebounded Tennessee State, 28 to 24. 
That's 16 offensive rebounds for the Golden Eagleettes to nine defensive rebounds for the Lady Tigers. 12 offensive defensive rebounds for the Eagleettes and 15 offensive for the Lady Tigers. Clayton underneath puts it in. She has five points tonight. Yeah, if it wouldn't surprise me now to see uh, Coach Lawrence uh, react to this, uh, our girls are just getting wide open. And uh, yes, yeah, she's calling her a timeout here. Get this under control quick here. But I think that uh, Bill uh, talked to him at the half. He's turned up the tempo a little. They're playing much more aggressive, and they're moving the ball around, is, uh, which is what we need to get that uh, zone that Tennessee State's throwing against us broken up there. Tennessee Tech had five turnovers in the first half to six for Tennessee State. Leading rebounder Melinda Clayton had seven in the first half for Tennessee Tech, and Thomas had six in the first half for the Lady Tigers, and she didn't see that much playing time. Now, Ann Thomas has been there looking at their previous game. She's kind of been their star, but uh, tonight uh, they're passing it around. Uh, they're using more people than they've used in the past, and it gave Tech a little problem at first, but now I think uh, we're back in there where Tech likes to be. They're definitely in control of the offensive tempo now. Tennessee State had eight players to score in the first half. They played all of their bench. Tennessee Tech had seven players scoring in the first half, leading all scorers Angela Moorhead now with 20 points in the contest. Nobody else on the floor in double figures, and I guess it would be hard for them to be in double figures as much as she's had the ball. I believe you said that everyone had scored but about one person, didn't you? Uh, everyone has played and eight have scored. They have four more who have not scored yet. They have 12 on their bench. They have three girls, or two girls there with three fouls, and uh, it's changed their style of play a little. But they're so quick under there. That was an excellent play by Mitzi, but they still got the ball just through pure quick. Hillary hits the shot as the shot clock was running out, and she has seven points playing with three fouls. She and Relisha Adams both have three fouls for the Lady Tigers. Renee Adams with three fouls for Tennessee Tech. To show you the tempo of the game, I believe that's the first time that the shot clock's even come close to being a factor in the entire game. Good pass underneath, and Clayton off the glass puts it in. Melinda Clayton now with seven points, still shy of her 13 points per game average. As long as they stay in that defense, I think we'll be able to work that ball in just like that the rest of the night. Guillory with the shot again from the same spot, and she has nine. Has an awful good touch for such a big gal. Good that's her average. Touch. Sean brought it back up, and now she's gone back to the wing. Calling for the ball, gets it inside to Clayton, almost inside. Good play by Relisha Adams to knock the ball away. That's the play they're looking for. As soon as they get it on the wing over there, they look and see where Clayton is, and so far she's wide open under there. But uh, Tennessee State reacted well there and made a good defensive play. Three-point try is good by... Cecilia Ramsey, she has nine. You were mentioning at the half that she's a dead eye, and she is. Uh, you leave her that wide open, she's going to make two out of three of them. Guillory off the glass this time won't go, and the rebound is tipped out to Sean Monday. Eaglets on the fast break. Baseline jumper is there. Cecilia Ramsey has 11. Only the second player in double figures tonight. That score is very deceptive. It's been a much better ball game than that. But, uh, Tennessee State now, I believe they're wearing down a little bit here. Her hands are tied a little more with all the foul trouble she's got them in. Adams on the turnaround is fouled. Melinda Clayton would pick up her third foul as Woods sets to check back in. Adams just didn't take it up as strong then as she did in the first half. Uh, she didn't go to that basket. Here she comes now. You see she gets this, and instead of going for the basket, she just kind of lays back there and not as strong and uh, decisive as she was in the first half. How many does she have, Steve? She has four points tonight. And how many fouls? And, oh, uh, Melinda Clayton has three fouls, excuse me. Right. So I believe she's got three and Renee's got three. So uh, That's correct deal. for Tennessee Tech. And uh, this lady at the free throw line, Relisha Adams and Tina Guillory have three apiece for Tennessee State. I believe that's why she didn't go quite as hard to that basket. She's a little leery of getting that fourth foul this early in the game. So Adams.
She's a 57% free throw shooter, misses the first one and makes the second. She has five points. Monday handling the ball for Tennessee Tech. It's fouled by Martha Newsom. That's her second foul of the game. First foul of the second half for the Lady Tigers. When Sean brings that ball up, you can just see it in her eyes there. Here's the, I wonder what their conversation is about right now. <laughs> when Sean brings that up, you can just see it in her eyes, what she's thinking and planning. Sean Mundy is called for traveling. A little over anxious there, but it was still a good play. Uh, takes very impressive under their offensive board right now. We just call a technical on Bill Wall here. Uh, He's saying, hey, if you're going to give me a technical, give me one when I deserve it. <laughs> He's when, when you're that get, far ahead. getting a smile out of him now. When you're that far ahead, you can afford a technical or two. I think Bill's really enjoying this. He's on center stage again. You know, the, he's, he's with that spread arm position that he has there as Jody Woods at the free throw line. Talked to some folks from Middle Tennessee State, and they said that's one thing they didn't like about Bill Whirl. He's just so big and impressive when he spreads those arms out. He, he looks uh, kind of threatening from over there on the bench. Yeah, he, he's a pathetic-looking figure when he puts those arms out like, Riff, I couldn't have done that. It wasn't me. Jody Woods converts both of the free throws on the technical foul, and she has eight points tonight for the Lady Tigers. 33-54. Turns around, shot will not fall in. Adams going back up is foul. Either Ramsey or Clayton. Let's hope it's Ramsey. Uh, if it's Clayton, that'll be four on her. And it is yeah. the fourth foul against Melinda Clayton, her second of the half. So Renee Adams comes in to replace her. R Renee is really a sleeper here. Here's Bill Whirl getting the technical foul. I think he just realized he's gotten a technical here. <laughs> he can't believe it. <laughs> and here comes a little smile. Uh, he's still working that official or getting some information from him, so. So Tennessee Tech enjoying a 21 point lead here in Gentry Center with 15.43 to play in the ball game. Yeah, there's a little difference in this second half. Tech came back out and they cranked up the tempo a couple of notches here. And they're definitely in charge both on the offensive and the defensive boards right now. But Melinda with four fouls, that could hurt us a little down the line. And next year, of course, you'll be gone, and it could definitely hurt us to lose the big gal. But we've got the two big girls, one in Gallatin and the Batten girl from Shelbyville coming on. So Bill just does a super job recruiting each year and brings in what he loses. And this is probably the first year since I've been here that we've really lost a lot all in one year. But this year we're losing Sean and... Uh, Melinda, so and, and Arnetta. also Arnetta Peterson. So, it's the first year since I've been here. We've really lost a lot of talent in one time. Three seniors, the luxury that Bill Whirl has not been used to. As Relisha Adams hits her first free throw, she has six points tonight, trying for seven. It's time she gets them both. Now they're putting the press back on. And, uh, Unless the ref just doesn't call bodily contact here, I don't think we'll have a bit of trouble handling their press. Bill kind of likes to be pressed. Uh, another excellent play under the basket and just missed a shot. Forehead falling away, puts it up no good. Adams turns around and puts it in. Renee Adams has four. Did a good job, too. Stayed with that. Uh, she could have given up on that, but Renee went after that ball well. Three-point try not fall and Adams gets the rebound off the shot of Hicks. I believe Bill might have talked to Renee at the uh, oh, little curly kneel there. <laughs> excellent play by Cecilia. And here we're open again. We just aren't hitting the shot. Angela Moorhead rebounds it up. No good. And Adams going for the rebound is foul. Yeah, Renee is a different girl in this second half here. She's really after those boards. Uh, I thought she might have here. Here's uh, this show, uh, showtime by Cecilia here. Absolutely super ball control. Uh, 
Not a lot of gals has that type of athletic ability. She's keeping her head about her, too. Yeah, this gal, Renee, gets up there, and the gal comes over her back, and uh, the ref right on top of it. Missy Rice going hard for the hoop. Yeah. Knocked out of bounds off Tennessee Tech. Lady Tigers. I believe Mitzi's pressing a little now. That's not a normal shot there. That was more of a push than a shot. And Arnetta is going to come in and relieve her here. Uh, First believe. action for Arnetta Peterson, a 5'7 senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Arnetta's another good shooter. She doesn't get credit for how good a shot she is, but uh, you give her a little opening and she's tough on it. Jody, another excellent three point play. And Jody Woods goes into double figures now with 11. We've got Sean back out at the point, changing it around. Uh, now they put her over here on the wing. But when you bring Renee and Arnetta and those people in off the bench, you don't leave much. And here's another foul against Renee. I believe they call Ann Thomas for her fourth. Okay, here's the uh, Renee first. goes up an excellent pass, but the gal comes in from the side. And although uh, Renee Mach could have made that shot. First foul on Ann Thomas, correct myself. So Renee Adams at the line for Tennessee Tech. I believe she's zero for four right now, so. Good, that's what she needed right there. Five points for Renee Adams. Junior from Gallatin, Tennessee. Renee's just a super young lady, too. She's uh, fun to be around. an official timeout. I'm not sure what the shot clock didn't reset. Now it has at this end, but it hadn't at the other end. 58 to 38, a 20 point lead for the Golden Eaglets. The shot clock is now reset on both ends. Here you see they're running it down to make sure the thing's going to work. And probably they'll reset it here one time to check it. Yeah, those shot clocks are a facility coordinator's nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, all clocks are, but you know it's not so bad. You watch it in the pros, you watch the pro football, everybody has trouble with it. So I think they want to see here if it will go off, but uh, it didn't go off, but I don't believe they ran it all the way down. So they're ready to go here. Another. There you saw a shot of the Tennessee State Tiger men's team. Yeah, both shot clocks are working now, so an excellent jump to turn around here. Uh, but Arnetta goes up and gets the rebound. Eaglets, two skip passes in a row, and the Lady Tigers were ready for it as Cynthia Hicks knocked the ball away. Arnetta really enjoys playing this game. She has a lot of fun, no matter what the score is or who she's playing. When she's in there, she has fun with it. Good defense Good. by the Lady Tigers. Excellent defense. Inside pass, blocked by Guillory. This, this passing, this outside in game that we're playing right now is getting the shots. We just aren't making them. And then, of course, they're uh, excellent defensive play by the Tigerette or Tiger Bell. Inside, Angela Moorhead ties her season high with 22 points. Guillory has four block shots in the game. I noticed they didn't count any block shots for Tech. Well, I know we had some. They just missed them. But uh, Angela Moorhead is working so hard right now away from the ball that it's uh, getting her open just time after time. And here we go inside out or outside in again. And again, it's open. And again, she lays it up there. 24 tonight for Angela Moorhead. That's her season high. Her career high at Tennessee Tech is 30. Three-pointer, NBA three-pointer. Will not fall for Hicks. Got her own rebound as it bounded way out in Newsom with it. Hicks back inside. Guillory. Excellent play. An excellent play. Renee's a little leery to do anything more than that since uh, Melinda has those four fouls on her. And Guillory is the second Lady Tiger in double figures. She has 11 tonight. Sticky defense again by the Lady Tigers. Yep. Renee Adams, it's blocked. Guillory 
Adams got it back and put it right in. Eight points for Renee Adams, and that's tough to keep your composure after you have a shot block. Excellent job by Renee. She stayed with that ball, and she didn't get discouraged. Uh, and then went back up and laid that ball in there. Shot from outside will not fall for Hicks. Tennessee Tech up by 24 points. Just under 12 minutes to play in the contest. You sure wouldn't think it was a 24-point different game. Uh, we've got a semester here, but <laughs> you wouldn't think it was a 24-point different game the way they've been playing. Uh, Foul inside. And Dana Scott will check back in for the Golden Eaglettes. Replacing Sean Monday. Sean's done an excellent job in there running the team. And I think I've seen her. She's gotten more rebounds tonight than I believe she has any time this year also. Martha Newsom's third foul of the game. Arnetta Peterson. Get out. Right. right in. Her first basket of the game. She is one person who is not afraid at all to put the ball in the air. She's not lacking for confidence. There's Angela again. An excellent job. Almost got another steal. She's playing like the all-conference she is. And Jody Woods will be whistled for her second foul. One of those didn't mean to yeah, foul. I believe Jody knew then uh, as soon as it happened. <laughs> this is our third <laughs> color commentator here. What's your name? He said it's Dick Vitale. It's what? <laughs> it's Vince? Vince. This is Vince. <laughs> He's helping us out with Vince, the commentary. Vince is keeping the stats for us. Yeah, he's working on our calculator here. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. We weren't sure you were going to make it tonight. <laughs> Where were you in the first day when we needed you, Vince? That's right. Turn around and block. Excellent job. Uh, Renee, uh-oh, Renee's got a little gimpy ankle here, but I don't think it's anything serious. So Renee Adams will go to the line. <laughs> Renee Adams has eight points tonight coming in spelling Melinda Clayton who went out with four fouls she's been much more of a factor this second half than she was the first half here Alicia Adams says Adams went up for the rebound for the Lady Tigers. The old adage, if you're going to make one, make a good one. And Cecilia made a good one that time. Here you can see it. She comes back here. She starts up for the ball, and then once she goes trying to knock it back out, uh, she gets her pretty good on the arm. Angelique Bell, number 31, is back in for the Lady Tigers. Has not scored in the game. She's their second leading scorer. Arnetta Peterson with a rebound goes to the floor, and who else but... Angela Moorhead picks it up. You know, she's just all over the court. All Angela over Moorhead, the court. so many steals and rebounds and scoring points and a little bit of everything. Assists also. She gave Arnetta a little smile saying, I'll help you out if you lose the ball. <laughs> Good hustle by Tennessee State and Tennessee Tech goes back across the timeline. Credit Leslie Williams, the little 4'11 guard from Columbia, South Carolina with that play. Arnetta did a good job. With, uh, her balance just carried her back into the backcourt. Uh, we haven't used our three-point play tonight as much as a weapon as we normally do. Uh, maybe we don't have to with this tight lead, but uh, Tennessee State now is going to where every second shot is a three-point shot. And Angelique Bell that was scores her there, first basket of the game. She touched the line, so they only gave her two. around by Adams almost blocked maybe Guillory got a piece of it I'm not sure well I'm glad to see Adams going for that basket like that she's going up hard uh, and doing a good job on the defensive board also Guillory got a rebound over her own girl but when she put it on the floor they tied it up it's going to be Tennessee State's ball on the alternating possession and Sean Mundy and Mitzi Rice will check back in for the Golden Eagleettes enjoy a 24 point lead under 10 minutes to play in the game 
Melinda Clayton leads the conference in block shots, by the way, averaging 1.6 per contest. Missy Rice with a good defense. Mitchell. Good job by Mitchell. Good outlet pass, and Sean Mundy holds up. Kicks it back out to Rice. Three-pointer is no good. He's tapped out of bounds by Gallery. Coach Whirl stands up, calling the play. Gallery's so tall, she's just over top of everybody Yeah, there. she even went up over Renee that time and actually did a good block. Uh, I think Bill thought it might have been a foul, but Bill might be prejudiced. <laughs> you see Coach Teresa Lawrence. Adams inside, maybe too far inside. Moorhead shot won't go. Adams took the ball away from everybody, including Moorhead. They kick it back out and start things over again. Mitzi Rice open for the jumper. And it's good. He's got the touch. She has five points tonight. Freshman from Shelbyville. Played for the Golden Eagleettes in high school of Shelbyville Central, Rick Insel's team. Bell guarded by Arnetta. Arnetta, and she's fouled. Angelique Bell puts the basket in. She'll have a chance for a three-point try. Arnetta's first foul of the game. And Melinda Clayton will check back in for the Golden Eagleettes, along with Shiloh Carson for the Lady Tigers. Okay, there's a... Arnetto's over her back. Uh, Renee comes out and gets a well-deserved hand. She's played super ball in there this second half. And Angelique Bell has five points all in the second half. Good crowd here now. Melinda Clayton gets the shot to go, and she has nine. The crowd for Tennessee State has even picked up quite a bit here. Since yeah, it sure has. You can tell from that missed foul, as they thought it was. But Melinda's uh, back in there now. Of course, she has four fouls on her. She'll be limited in what she can do. But here comes Arnett on the fast break. Missy Rice with it. Again, good defense out there by Williams. Inside to Clayton, a turnaround off the glass, no good. Got her own rebound, went to the floor hard, and they call a foul. Clayton may have hit her elbow. Looks like one of those funny bone deals where the pain shoots through your arm. Yeah, I don't believe she's injured, but she could have been. She fell off the hard there. Here's the replay. And she's up and she gets hit from behind pretty hard here and she lands awfully hard on that left elbow and is still rubbing it, but I don't believe she's hurt that bad. There you see Cynthia Hicks checking back into the lineup for the Lady Tigers. She started the game and is one of 12 Lady Tigers who've seen action. Melinda Clayton at the line for the Golden Eagle S. Can't get those free throws to fall. Angelique Bell with a rebound. Yeah, we were last in the conference and we might still be after this game. Carson on the turnaround, no good. Good rebound by Hicks, but she threw the ball away as she was trying to kick out the pass. Tennessee Tech with a 25-point lead, eight minutes to play in the contest. Arnetta Peterson. Another dead eye from Arnetta. Four points for Arnetta all in the second half. As I said earlier, once she comes off of that bench, you don't lose much. Uh. So Tennessee Tech gets another turnover from the Lady Tigers, who seem to have maybe run out of steam. Yeah, it's showing now on both ends of the court. Uh, I don't believe there's been as much substituting this second half as there was the first half, and that might be a factor in it. Rice with a pass inside to Moorhead over Guillory. Oh, excellent job by Moorhead. Angela Moorhead now with 26 points. <laughs> Angela's enjoying what she's doing out there right now. She's playing both ends of the court as hard as she can. Here she is getting the rebound, and Shiloh Carson commits her third foul of the game. So Angela Moorhead will be going to the line for the Golden Eagleettes. 
They'll send in Sheila Jackson, a 5'10 freshman from Moscow. They do send in a lot of freshmen and sophomores. So Tennessee State in a building year is uh, really having a, a good year, 500 up to now, and, and uh, a lot of young players. And she's giving them all the experience they need. In a year or two, Tennessee State could be a definite factor in the race for OVC. Arnetta Peterson with the defense out front knocks it out of bounds. Lady Tigers will retain possession. Arnetta's sneaky quick. Uh, you don't think she's that quick, but you've got to protect that ball when Arnetta's around. Yolanda Bugs, number 25, checks back in. She's a freshman from Decatur, Georgia. Fine play by Mitzi Rice there. She knew when to stop to keep from getting that foul. Angela Moorhead picked up the loose ball, but Travel trying to find somebody to throw it to. But she works awful hard under that basket there. Sean Mundy almost had a steal, went right through her hands. Now the caller for reaching in. That's her third foul of the game. <laughs> I think Vince is a... He's figured out the calculator. Yeah. <laughs> He's just off a bashful. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of surprised that Sean let that steal get away from her because she doesn't do that very often. Uh, Mitzi's on the board again. There she is under. Angela Brown on the turnaround. Excellent shot by Angela. So I said Angela Brown, or her name is Angela Moorhead. Angela Brown last year, now she's Angela Moorhead. Well, 28 points for her tonight. That's the first one you've missed tonight, Steve. So <laughs> everybody's allowed one. Bill's called a timeout here. Uh, I think he probably get the rest of them in there for a little pretty soon here. But when you look at that score, it's just unbelievable there can be that much difference as close as this game has been contested. 31 points. There you see, Vince. Hey, Vince, look, look right over there and wave. Wave at that camera and say, hi, Mom. There you go. Good job. <laughs> How do you like that eagle up there, Vince? You see the eagle up there? Awesome eagle always doing an outstanding job uh, cheering this team on. He's about the best we've had since I've been at Tech. He does an excellent job, and he's... Travels with the team everywhere they go. I was very surprised he wasn't over at middle the other night, but he told me he just had some work he had to get done that night. He's had some cosmetic surgery, you notice. He has a new head this year. <laughs> he needed one. And there you see Teresa Lawrence in her first year still coaching hard over there on the sideline. Yep. She doesn't even know the score is that big a difference. She's still into this ball game like it was an opening tip-off. Well, the Lady Tigers have played hard all the way through. I'm impressed with what she's done with this team in such a short while. They almost didn't get back out there, and the official did what he should do after that second whistle, hand him the ball. Tennessee Tech with a pass inside to Renee Adams, and it rolls in. Renee now in double figures with 10 points. Yeah, she got a little further under than she wanted to, but she reacted great uh, to get back out from under the basket and get it in. I believe Vince is leaving us to go officiate now. <laughs> Inside the shot is good by Angelique Bell. She has seven points. She's the team captain, by the way, of the Lady Tigers. Coach Lawrence says she's the one of the smartest players on the team. Another great pass in from uh... and Renee Adams has 12. She's got a chance to convert a three-point play as the foul is called against the Lady Tigers. Yeah, Renee missed the easy shot and then made the hard one. Four fouls on Shiloh Carson and Dana Scott checks back in for the Golden Eaglets, replacing Mitzi Rice. Dana had seven points in the first half. Five, eight sophomore from Oak Ridge. Renee Adams at the line. With Arnetta and uh, Dana and Sean in there, that's an awful quick lineup we've got in there. And with Tennessee State getting a little tired, I wouldn't be surprised to see us take that ball away a few times here. Hicks drives, puts it up, no good. Gets her own rebound, though. From the 
the baseline. Bell strips the net. Excellent touch. Nine points for Angelique Bell. And they're bringing back in Yola or Rulisha Adams, the six-foot sophomore from Dermott, Arizona. Full-court man-to-man pressure now by the Lady Tigers. Pass it inside. Adam's shot is blocked. Looks like Adam's got a piece of Adam's shot. Sean Mundy bothering the pass down court, and it's knocked out of bounds by Hicks. That's that quickness I was talking about. I think we'll give them a lot of trouble. Uh, they aren't getting under the basket like they did in the first half. They're taking all of their three-point shots. When they shot 29%, I believe, at the first half, uh, the score could get worse than it is now. Coming up on five minutes to play in the ball game. Good pass again inside. Adams, a nice move. Excellent movement. How that ball went in, I don't know, because it was blocked. Excellent movement of the ball there. Bell with the turnaround jumper. It's good. Angelique Bell. The third Lady Tiger in double figures, and she, Woods, and Guillory all have 11 points for the Lady Tigers of Tennessee State. This was blocked by Alicia Adams, and Amy Taylor is in to see her first action for the Golden Eaglets, a 5'7 freshman from McMinnville, Tennessee. Let's leave that there. And Amy's a little fireball. She gets in there, and she runs and runs and runs. Uh, That's Amy Taylor with the ball now, looking inside Melinda Clayton. The turnaround will not fall. Ball goes to the floor. Arnetta Peterson got it. <laughs> Couldn't get the shot to go. Good job by Dana Scott to keep the pass from going out of bounds. Ray Adams, this time they call the foul. Another block, but she got her with her hips. Uh... Relisha Adams, I have her with four fouls now. It's a good call. <laughs> Here it is where Renee gets the ball, and this gal gets up high enough to block it, but she gets it with her hips just as she gets into the basket there. And Melinda Clayton will come out as Jill Tittle checks in for the Golden Eaglets, a 5'10 sophomore from Johnson City, Tennessee. You see Jill alongside Amy Taylor. has 15 points tonight. Tennessee State sending in a substitution as soon as they get a chance. Adams good on both of those. Great job of foul shooting here in this second half by Renee. She averages just under eight a game and she has 16 in this contest. Couldn't happen to a better person. Renee's a fine young lady. Amy Taylor doing everything she can to get the ball. When Amy it's gets a little on. more experience, she's going to be a definite factor for Tennessee Tech. She comes off of that bench and gives it 100%. Almost made the steal there. Alicia Thomas, or Misha Thomas, couldn't get the shot to go. And there on the floor is Leslie Williams. I would like to have seen her try that shot over Renee. I believe she's four foot eleven. <laughs> Taylor brings it down. Eaglets reverse the floor. Now back the other way. Jill Tittle, she'll put it up. It's blocked by Rulisha Adams. Dana Scott with three. No, they give her two. Officials have a conference here. What? A foul. I don't know who he called it on. Here's the shot again. Let's see who he called this on. I believe it's away from the ball, but there's an excellent shot by Dana. It was against Tennessee Tech. Possibly Renee Adams. Looked like they held up a 5-5. That would be her fourth. If that were the case. Again, alternating possession. This time it'll be Tennessee Tech's ball. Good hustle again by both teams. 
They're both still very much in this ball game, and they want that ball. Coming up on three minutes to play in the contest. Tech is drawing a big lead at this moment. Inside, Renee Adams off the glass has 18 points tonight. Excellent movement of that ball around the horn and back under, and there she stands under for the layup. That's her season high, but she holds the freshman record in scoring for Tennessee Tech with a 35-point game her first year. That freshman year was... Uh, we haven't had many freshmen do better than that in their freshman year than she did in her freshman year. And you know, she's the only player I know of in the OVC who comes off the bench who was the first team all OVC selection. And yet she adjusted to it and just still gives it 100%. Very unselfish young lady. 37-point lead for the Eaglettes. by Adams is good. Relisha Adams has nine. Tennessee State's kind of gotten away from the three points now and started moving back under the basket and uh, are doing a good job with it. Timeout is called as Robin Smith will check into the lineup for the Golden Eaglettes, a 5'8 freshman guard from Cookville, Tennessee. But well, looked like a timeout to me, but they're staying on the floor as Shiloh Carson will also check in. Yeah, I don't know what a... There was definitely a timeout call, but then maybe Bill just didn't want the timeout. Two and minutes. Everybody, by the way, now has played for Tennessee Tech, as we saw Robin Smith with a shot up and in. Everybody for Tennessee Tech has played, with the exception of Cindy Montu, who's on the bench with a twisted ankle. Yeah, they're having a lot of fun on that bench. Uh, when Robin scores that, uh, they all pull for each other very well. She averages three and a half points a contest, does Robin Smith. Excellent steal by Tittle here. Uh, just a little too quick for him under there. Robin Smith with the ball. Lost it. Bell saves it but loses it. Loses it in the process of saving it. Now, do we have a timeout? I think we do. A minute 32 to play in the contest. Tennessee Tech leading 90 to 53. And Bill's used his bench better this second half. Uh, it's kind of worn the Tennessee State girls down a little bit, and now Tennessee Tech's doing about anything they want to under their offensive board. Up next for Tennessee State will be January the 15th. Here in Gentry Center against Middle Tennessee State, the MTSU Lady Raiders have struggled this year, and in 17 meetings between Tennessee State and MTSU, Tennessee State has never won. This would be a year from having seen Middle last week and watched Tennessee State here. Uh, Tennessee State gets a little better shooting percentage than they've had here tonight. Uh, they could give middle. They would match up with them very well, I feel. Up next for the Eaglets is the January the 15th at home in Cookville against Southern Illinois, the Salukis, who so, have been a top 20 team in the past couple of years. Yeah, they are, had a rough road this year. I believe they're 7-7 seven and seven right now, but they still have excellent talent and could give our Golden Eaglets a rough game there. From Carbondale, Illinois, it's a beautiful city. I remember when we upset them a few years back when they were up in the top 10 in the nation. It was one of our bigger wins since I've been at Tech. Dana Scott for three. Dana Scott has 12. She's the fourth Eagle Ed in double figures. Yeah, those people in there now, they want to play. They want to get as much playing time as they can. And another great steal by Arnetta. And it's stolen back by Leslie Williams. Good ball movement by oh. the Lady Tigers. And Alicia Adams, she is the fourth Lady Tiger in double figures, and all of them have 11 points. Excellent play uh, by the TSU women here. And they're still all over those girls. Uh, there's no give up at all here. Adams gets another block shot. If they count all these block shots, we might have a new OVC record tonight because they have really rejected those shots that Tennessee Tech has thrown up. Tittle takes. Nice double fake, but she's fouled as she goes up for the shot. Number 25. The 
call Shiloh Carson. I'm not sure if that's her fifth or not. That's it. First player to foul out of this game. You know, there were so many fouls in the first half, Bill. I was just sure that there were going to be three or four people foul out before it was over, but she's the first with only 20 seconds to play. They had two of their better players with three each within the first 10 minutes of the game. Uh, so they've done a super job. Uh, I'll tell you, this coach is impressing me. So Jill Tittle at the line couldn't get the first one to fall. Nine Golden Eagleettes have scored. couldn't get the shot to go in. Bell did a good job of throwing the ball, getting it to a teammate, or else she would have traveled. Yep. And a foul as time is slowly Smith. running out. Yeah, I believe this is on Smith for Tennessee Tech. And That's her got first. Her. You know, she's 10 for 10 from the free throw line this year. Robin Smith for Tennessee Tech at right. one point led the OVC in free throw shooting percentage, but she's not shot enough shots to stay uh, in the rankings. No, I didn't know that. Relisha Adams with 11 points, and she's going to keep that 11 points. Couldn't get that shot to fall. Shot won't fall again, and still won't go. Eagle lets get the rebound, but that's the ball game. Tennessee Tech wins it 93 to 55 over Tennessee State here in Gentry Center. I tell you, it wasn't as easy as the score indicates here. Both teams played excellent basketball, and it was a good, hard-fought physical game. And Tennessee Tech, although uh, Tennessee State used all of their bench, Tennessee Tech was just a little better material coming off of the bench than Tennessee State had. And another big win on the road, too, in an OVC.